Hello, friends, and welcome to Looking Up. We are a podcast for Christian women, and we're looking forward to our discussion today and looking forward to talking to one another, and we're glad that you're here. My name is Carla Moore, and I'm here with my friend Kathy Pollard. We are your hosts for this podcast, and how are you doing today, Kathy? I'm doing great. We've already been laughing a little bit on mm-hmm. the chit-chat that we had before we hit record, so off to a good start. And yeah, but it's... we won't tell anybody what we were laughing about. No, no, Carla, no. <laughs> That stays in the vault, as my friend Bonnie likes to say. That's in the vault. (laughs) That's a good way to put it. Yeah. Yeah. And it's spring and gorgeous. Mm -hmm. And I was outside watering the gardens and the little green things are growing up and just makes my heart sing. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's great. I know you've been looking forward to getting your fingers in the dirt again. Mm -hmm. Yes, I have. Yeah. Well, I'm in a different place again. You can yes, see you the are. fun you chalkboard around fancy me. Fancy artwork behind you. Yeah. Well, my my internet at home here in Dripping Springs is never very good, and and uh, I think you said that I was freezing up and mm-hmm. and then racing ahead with my words with my mouth yeah. not matching up. Yeah. So and your your voice got a little robotic. <laughs> <laughs> well, that would not be a good thing. It's yeah. already annoying enough to not be robotic too. <laughs> No, so anyway, not. I'm at the church building. I'm at the church building here in Dripping Springs in the youth classroom. So I thought this would be a fun background. And yeah, plus I, I can like shut it. the door and nobody can hear me. That black, that black background looks good with your shirt. Yeah, thanks. Very nice. Thanks. So, but you're in the same place, but we're back on our regularly mm-hmm. scheduled programming or recording here because mm-hmm. um, we've been kind of weird the last couple of weeks with travel and things. So <laughs> the last couple of weeks. Well, we're permanently weird, but our yeah. recording schedule has been weird. Yeah, so now it feels we're back. good to be back to normal and yeah. to have the house to myself mm-hmm. for yeah, this I, recording. Yeah, we're not <laughs> self-conscious about someone listening. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Did you get to do any thrifting? I did, and I'm Yay! wearing one of the things, just oh, a little bit. Oh, okay. I my, love that. My, my thrifted top that I'm wearing, and I found a couple of things to sell, and I actually brought them to show you. And it's funny because this is a pair of shoes Nice. and it's not something that I would wear. I I would trip and fall all over myself, but Mm -hmm. it's a pair of Sarah Flint, which I had never heard of. I had to look it up, Sarah Mm -hmm. Flint shoes. But anytime you see on the bottom handmade in Italy, you know that Mm -hmm. they're probably worth something. So I picked those up and I've got those listed. Hopefully I'll make a little bit off those, but what size are they? uh, They're 38 and a half. (laughs) Those fit you. What size do you wear? A six and a half. Oh yeah. Too big for you. I mean, the, the heel is not super high. No, they're like little kitten heels. Yeah. Except don't kitten heels have the little flare at the bottom and these don't have that flare. Yeah. It's just a little stiletto yeah, or not pretty. a stiletto, but yeah, they're, they're pretty, they're blue suede, but I think they retail for like $700, which I just oh. can't, I can't even imagine ever wow. spending that much on a pair of shoes. How do you find these things? Well, Actually, I mean, they were the, here and dripping, which is very surprising. But when you find something like that, then you f- start thinking, I wonder if that same person left something else. And I found another pair of heels, a different brand, the same size. So it was probably the same person. So I have those listed, but I'm excited about these two. These are my new wow. tennis shoes. They're Brooks. Fancy. And they're my size and they're brand new. I got them for 10 bucks. So they're fun. They're- they're cute. Yeah. And then my, my Good niece, job. Lauren, you know, I've, I've talked about her before. She's a better thrifter than I am. She's that's her job. She buys to resell on Poshmark and Mercari mm-hmm. and eBay and places I've never even heard of before, but she texted me a picture of a dress that she found last week. I can't even say the name. It's some kind of Swedish dressmaker. And she said, this looks like you, which made me feel good that, that she thought it looks like me, that she knows what I like. And she said she would save it for me if I liked it. And so I'm sure I'll bring it next week to oh, equip. I'll probably wear it next week. Oh, yay. Yeah. Speaking Looking of equipped. That. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's coming up. I can't wait. Yeah. yeah. So wait what are we going to do about recording? Are we going to do it there or before oh, we leave? Or You know, that's... I hadn't even thought about it. Oh, that's going to be. Yeah. It's well, we can talk about that later. We'll we can talk figure about that, that later. out. Yeah. What about you? You said you've got some little green things coming up. Yes. Yes. We planted uh, um, <clears throat> radishes <clears throat> and beets and spring greens and forget what else is out there, but they're, they're already coming, coming up big enough for me to start thinning out, you know, mm-hmm. and uh, I just love it. Going out there and watering in the morning. Yeah. Listening to the birds. 
smelling the soil. It just, oh, that's your happy place. That is my happy place. I absolutely love it. It makes me smile. I can't help it. I come in humming and singing and, mm-hmm. you know, it's just a good place. I meant to tell you that when we were at Nazareth village, mm-hmm. they really have made it even more of a kind of a living oh. little community. Mm-hmm. People don't live there, but they had gardens everywhere. And the hmm. most beautiful lettuce I had ever seen. And I'll send you a picture of it because it was yeah. just, I honestly, this kind of, you're going to laugh at me, but I don't know that I've ever seen lettuce growing like that. It looked like green leaf lettuce and it was just mm-hmm. so big and green and beautiful. And, and seeing it sitting in the dirt like that made me realize why there's always dirt. And when I buy a, a head of green leaf lettuce, <laughs> I don't know right. what I thought, how it grew, but <laughs> Yeah, there's, it was sitting in the dirt. So that's yes. where plants do grow. It is. Yeah. yeah. But I'll send yeah. you a picture because it was so pretty. I thought of you. Well, I love growing it because you can just go out there and um, clip it, clip it off at the bottom and it'll mm-hmm. regrow. So you can clip it off and eat it and go out oh, there wow. a few days later and you clip off some more and eat it and go. Up. Yeah. That's kind of one of those, you can't out give God things, mm-hmm. isn't it? It sure is. It's pretty amazing. Yeah. Oh, growing... arugula. I'm growing arugula. That's probably my favorite thing. Yeah. That's one of the ways you and I are different. Cause I don't like arugula. I love it's it. It's kind of bitter, isn't it? I don't think so, but maybe you've had, have you had baby arugula? I don't know. Hmm. Maybe I'll try it. I'll go out in your garden when I'm there next week and rip some off and try it. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be ready. <laughs> Well, it'll be baby, won't it? If it's not, it'll be really baby. (laughs) Okay. So maybe you can show me what's good, good to, to, um, to try. Yeah. So, um, I was going to bring up, there was a couple of people that mentioned to us and asked us if we knew that there were bloopers at the end of our, uh, they didn't call them bloopers, (laughs) but I had a friend call me this morning and she said, Carla, I didn't know if you knew it, but after you finished your podcast last week, you didn't stop it. There's like, there's like five more minutes and y'all, I think you just left it running. <laughs> I said, no, that was on purpose. We, we oh, intended no. to humiliate ourselves. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody mentioned that in, in the Facebook group too. Yeah. So I, I guess I put it in the show notes mm-hmm. description that I added that at the end, but I probably should have put it in the title. So as you mentioned earlier, if somebody's listening to it in their car and all they're seeing is the title, they'll yeah. know to expect it. They'll know that that's what's actually going on and that we did that on purpose. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It was funny. Yeah. yeah I, you did leave out the part where you introduced yourself as Kathy Moore, though. That was funny. You should add yes. that somewhere. Yeah. I didn't save that one. Sorry. Okay. Too much stuff to choose from, really. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Too much bad stuff to, yes. to laugh at. Yeah. So it also, um, we were going to mention too, that we had posted a picture in the Facebook group about uh, with us in the back of a car on the way Mm -hmm. up to the Syrian and Lebanese Mm -hmm. border. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I was trying to think back. I was nervous Mm -hmm. because we were so close. Were you, because I, I don't think of you as being ever being nervous when we're there. I didn't get nervous until we pulled up to this great big tall chain link fence that had like the barbed wire stuff at the top of it. And they're trying to figure out how to get inside. Yeah. And And I remember a sign that said that they closed the gate at a certain time. And I, yeah. And I remember at that time thinking, are we even supposed to be here? Like, is this legal? Mm -hmm. (laughs) Are we allowed to be here? Where are you guys going? Do y'all know what you're doing? And you and I are just kind of sitting in the backseat looking at each other like, okay. (laughs) Yeah. I was thinking this was before we really took medicine. We didn't need medicine, but I was thinking, I don't have a, I don't have, if we get stuck up here, what are we going to do? Sleep in the car? Are we going to find a place somewhere? Do we even have our passports? We didn't have our passports. Uh Uh-uh. But I, I have a, um, I remember taking a screenshot. I turned on the Google maps just to see where we were. And, and you could see we were not far from the border to Lebanon and the, the border to Syria. Mm-hmm. So, but I, I tried not to be too um, whiny baby or too scaredy cat because Neil is always up for a, an adventure and John is too. He's always wanting mm-hmm. to know what, what's, what's a little further around the bend. And you are always yeah. more brave than I am there. So I was trying not to be a scaredy cat, but I was, I'm not ever nervous there in Israel, mm-hmm. but that was a little too close for comfort to places that 
don't like us. <laughs> yeah, I, I felt that a little bit. And usually I'm up for, I'm all about going off the beaten path. <clears throat> Let's go where the tourists don't go. And that's it, fun and exciting to me. But I do remember, you know, kind of having thoughts along the lines of, are we going to end up on the news later? Yeah. <laughs> Americans yeah. get Poor stuck. American tourists. Yeah. Somebody walks around the corner with an AK-47. <laughs> what are you doing here? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but that was a fun trip. And I, I think that was the same trip that you and I took a picture of our shadows on the ground <laughs> our hair because was our crazy. hair was everywhere. And we were um, laughing about this. It's a good day when your hair looks like this. You know, you've been yeah. adventuring. That was yeah. at Debbie Samuel. And every time I'm there now, I think about that. It's fun. I never have good hair in Israel because it seems like the the curling iron that I bring, even with the adapter, doesn't really work really well if we're in a hotel. And then when you're out, and, so usually I'm having to let it air dry anyway. And then when you're out and about and the wind just takes it, your hair yeah. in all directions. And But that's one of the great things about being there is you don't have to care. Yes, you don't care. It doesn't care. really matter what it looks Israel like. Israel hair don't care. Mm-hmm, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I was going to tell you about something neat that, that uh, I saw this week. We went up to... Grady and Janice is my in-laws house, which is where, you know, just down the hill from where they used to live. And the family sold it about, I guess, a year and a half ago, something like that Mm -hmm. to a man who is remodeling it. And it has a gorgeous view. I mean, it's got to be one of the best views in Hayes County. And we we don't have mountains or anything. My father-in-law always called them mountains, but they're hills. It's the hill country. Dripping Springs is the gateway to the hill country. It's but the man that area. bought it, it's, yeah, it's pretty. And the property, the acreage that's goes way beyond their, their property is under some kind of, it, it's not ever going to be developed. It's got mm-hmm. like a hundred year something. I can't remember what it's called, but so he is remodeling and he actually built a whole new section and he, he, it's too hard to explain what he did to the house, but he took the picket fence in the front yard and he, he has made it into a, like an accent wall over his new fireplace. So all of these little That's, pickets from the fence. What a great are, idea. It is. It's so pretty. And it's, you know, it's weathered wood. It's mm-hmm. painted white, but they're all mm-hmm. different shades of white because they've been outside and weathered. And uh, it was just very, very sweet. He still calls it Grady's house. Oh, yeah. And um, he was just very sensitive to the fact that John and Anita were going to be there at the house for this HOA meeting. That's why we were there. And he wanted them to see it. And I think he was really just wanting mm-hmm. their approval. And, and it, it's a beautiful place. Yeah, it was, it was really neat. So what I appreciate about that is it's so authentic. Mm-hmm. You know, it looks weathered because it is weathered. <laughs> it's exactly. not made to look weathered. Yeah. Yeah. It's not faux weather. Exactly. And I sent a picture around in our little family text group. And Micah wrote back immediately and said, did you tell him about the the time that granny cra- or that he crashed the go-kart into the fence? <laughs> <laughs> so there's memories attached to that fence. Aww. Granny, John's mother was always, she would always do anything with the boys. You know, she, she was not, didn't get around too well in her later years, which was most of my boys growing up, but she got on the go-kart with them one time and, and uh, <laughs> drove it around and yeah, she was a tomboy when she was a little girl. So they Aww. have good memories of her. It was neat. That is very cool. Yeah. Well, I have something to share. Okay. You see this book? This is called Housekeeping Old... Mm-hmm. in Old Virginia. Yeah. This, um, you know, I told you that Bud and Christy <clears throat> and their son David were here for Easter. Well, he brought this book. <clears throat> He found it and thought of me, you know, we used to live in the Richmond, Virginia area for about 12 Mm -hmm. years and housekeeping in old Virginia. First of all, I just love the way it looks and smells. And it was published in um, 1879. Oh, wow. And it has all these different contributors. And most of it is um, categories have to do with food. You know, it's things like bread, coffee, tea, chocolate, milk, butter, soup, oysters. It's Mm -hmm. broken down in categories like that. And it has all these different, probably 200 or more contributors. This list of contributors just keeps going on for pages. And, um, but the little intro, just, just listen, just for a second, if you'll indulge me. Yes. Um, Virginia or the old dominion as her children delight to call her has always been famed for the style of her living. 
Taught by the example of her royal colonial governors and the numerous adherents of King Charles, who brought hither in their exile the graces and luxuriousness of his brilliant court, she became noted among the colonies for the princely hospitality of her people and for the beauty and richness of their living. Mm. And then in the end of it, she talks about um, the book will be a success if above all, it succeeds in making American homes more attractive to American husbands <laughs> <laughs> and spare them the resort to hotels and saloons for these simple luxuries, which their wives know not how to provide. <laughs> wow. If she shall thus add to the comfort, to the health and happy contentment of these, she will approve in some measure a public benefactor and will feel amply repaid for all the labor her work has cost. But it's such a delight to go through and look at these recipes. There's even a section in here on how to pick coffee and how to roast coffee, oh, wow. um, jams and jellies. And then, of course, things that we've never heard of or made or tried. But um, I'm so excited to have this. And it was really sweet of them. Yeah. To give and it to you me. said 1879. Yeah, 1879. That's and very cool. um so I had actually ordered, I can't remember if I mentioned this on here or not, but I went back and found some unique seeds on Etsy and I found um, seeds for uh, coffee plants mm -hmm. that I'm going to grow probably just indoors, but they look like green coffee beans. And then I bought some peanut seeds. Yeah. Peanut, I don't know what to call them for to grow peanuts because I wanted mm -hmm. to try that. And then the other one that I'm excited about is pink radicchio, radicchio. Yeah. Pink radicchio, which is kind of trending right now. It's just this really gorgeous, beautiful, almost corally, shellfishy pink kind of color that looks makes the most stunning salads. Salad, yeah. So I'll be able to grow that outside. But okay. anyway, it'll be so fun. you're gonna have to learn how to roast coffee. Well, we already Turn have that over to Neil. We already have a coffee roaster. I got one for him for his birthday or Christmas or something. I can't remember, but Has so we've been, it? yeah, we've been buying, we've had to order them. We've been ordering green beans, <laughs> green coffee beans from different places. Yeah. And it definitely is a learning curve yeah. <laughs> and you'd think it'd smell amazing, but it really doesn't coffee mm -hmm. when it's actually roasting can tend to have a very, very, very strong scent, like knock you over kind of a scent. So does it smell like coffee? Uh, sort of, but not in a really pleasant way. So Doesn't it make to... you wonder about the first person that did that? Like, was it an yeah. accident that they got yeah, to I've... the roasted coffee that we like? Mm -hmm. I've wondered that about a lot of things. Like yeah, the first part, always the one that comes to my mind, the first person that ate an oyster. Yeah. They must've been really, really hungry. I mean, what in the world? Mm -hmm. First of all, how'd they know you can open that thing? And then when they yeah. saw it and saw that it looked like a loogie, <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think mm, I bet this would be delicious. <laughs> yeah. I think they had to have been starving to death. Probably so. Probably so. But well, when you were reading that about that they brought up oysters, it made me think, you know, that was on the East Coast. So they would have had lots of things coming from the ocean. But when you think about more of the Western progression across the states there wouldn't have been oysters it would have been different things that they would have mm -hmm. found to to eat and to um new different recipes in different places because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. oysters to me is very much a an east coast thing yes can you get those i mean i know you can get them here obviously with grocery stores but do they mm -hmm. grow down here in the in uh, the coast like in in our ocean down <laughs> I, don't I don't eat oysters so i don't know I do eat oysters, but only when I go to coastal places. Like when we go eat to them Florida, fried? I eat them fried and then broiled. Yeah. I've never had a raw oyster. I've also had oyster stew. I love oyster stew. Yeah. My mom loves oysters and John will eat them too, but I just can't get past the way they look. Well, yeah. when yeah. you grow up, you might try <laughs> Exactly. <one. laughs> when I grow up, <laughs> I've got a ways to go food wise anyway. So we had, um, a ladies Bible class over here Tuesday night. And it's, it's been a while since we've had one. We, I've decided we're just going to do it once a month. And so typically when we have ladies Bible class here, we start out with maybe, maybe about 20 women. And then our average 
will be about 15. You know, we typically start out a little bit higher and then we kind of dwindle down to the faithful 15 or whatever. Yeah. Uh-huh. And um, so I ordered 20 books and we had 38 women show up. That's awesome. Well, since I had one of the books, that meant there were only 19 to pass out. So mm-hmm. only half of the women even got a book. And we were pulling out chairs right and left. My mom was running upstairs looking for chairs in my office. We were pulling up chairs from the basement. We had people sitting on a trunk. <laughs> it was yeah. just like wherever. Mm-hmm. It's a great wherever problem. We get, it was a great problem, but we were crunched in here. You know, it was it was wonderful and the singing was good, but yeah. um, we were just all crunched in here and it kind of flabbergasted me. I felt kind of unprepared because then I was a little bit flustered. Like uh, I had this little activity that I wanted to do, but I only had 32 cards for it, Mm -hmm. you know? And so I was like, Oh, (laughs) just, it was a great thing. So many extra showed up. Well, first of all, because we haven't had it in a while, I think everybody was just ready for it. Yeah. Maybe because we're only meeting once a month, people feel like they can commit to that better that we've got a lot of ball games going on right now. And Mm -hmm. we have evening, other evening Bible studies going on. And, you know, we also have a lot of new people here. Yeah um, that weren't here before that came, you know, so it could be any of those reasons, but I was just a little bit flustered because I felt like it was, it was great, but I felt unprepared. And, and so then I I didn't even have a seat, you know, I was like standing up to teach my lesson and kept trying to move where I thought we're using Fried Hardeman's newest ladies devotional book that they do for their lectureship. Okay. It's, um, strengthened for such a time as this. Mm study of uh Ezra Nehemiah and Esther can you hear the ambulance no. I guess I, I, I there's something going on outside sorry it's very distracting to me because it's like a bunch of police cars and ambulance and oh I, th- that kind of noise always throws me off yeah it's not coming through on my end okay but yeah. anyway I made yeah. these um little apple tarts with puff pastry I just cut them all into little squares and I still had some honeysuckle jelly. So I put that on them and apple slices and cinnamon and sugar. And, you know, they, they turned out really cute, but thankfully ahead of time, Hillary Hammer had said, do you want me to bring a dessert? And I was like, yeah, that'd be great. Cause I was thinking my day was going to be kind of busy. I wasn't even Mm -hmm. sure if I was going to have time to make those apple tarts. So I was like, yeah, that'd be great. Well, now I'm glad because (laughs) yeah, you had enough for other people. Yeah, we had enough food so um but it was such a good night it was very exciting I think everybody just enjoyed being together just women there's just something special about that just women to getting together and talking and studying and praying for each other and do you have a daytime ladies bible class no we used to before the pandemic there was one Tuesday morning but it wasn't really well well attended I think maybe because a lot of our ladies work Right. Have things yeah, going I feel on like, in the day. So. I feel like th- those kinds of classes have fallen off just across the brotherhood. We don't see nearly as many, at least the, the congregations that I know of don't have a daytime ladies class. We have one in the evenings, but that's one of the, well, it's once a month, Jamie Banks mm-hmm. hosts it and mm-hmm. it's a, a great class, but I'm, you know, half the time here and half the yeah. time gone. And so I feel like I don't get to plug in fully either place, but that's great that y'all had a, such a good turnout. You mentioned puff pastry. Mm-hmm. Have you used it for other things before? No, not really. Um, what's that one that you used to make baklava? I always get those confused. Philo or Philo. Philo. Yeah. So I've okay. used that several times, mm-hmm. but, and what gave me the idea was um, when Emily had that painting and pastries, mm-hmm. she made this beautiful dessert out of puff pastry that was kind of rolled with big chocolate chunks in it. Mm. And I thought that is such a great idea. I always see ideas for that on Pinterest and things, but I've never done it. So it was so easy and they turned out so elegant and pretty. Mm -hmm. I was feeling all like French. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Well, I have a great recipe. Well, it's a half baked harvest recipe for a bacon puff pastry Mm. that we tried first at Christmas. And then I made it a couple of times since then, but it's puff pastry that you kind of flatten and then, um, cut it in half. I could, I can post the recipe, but it has sprinkled, um, cinnamon, no, not cinnamon, just brown sugar and rosemary. Oh, and, 
uh, cheddar cheese, like sharp cheddar cheese. Oh yeah. So, so you sprinkle that on half of it and then you fold it over and you cut it into strips and you twist it Oh, and then you wrap bacon around it <gasps> and bake, bake it. And you it must was, share that recipe. Oh, they are so, so good. That sounds amazing. Yeah, it was amazing. And something about that rosemary in there just sets it off. Oh, let so me good. ask you this. Do you need to eat it fresh for it to be yummy or does it hold up well? It's best just out of the oven, but Mm -hmm. it's also really good cold. Ask me how I know because (laughs) we had leftovers and I just pulled one out and ate it cold straight from the refrigerator. And it was really good. It's best, you know, obviously it's best right out of the oven, but it was yummy, yummy. Finger foods and singing once a month at Lehman. And Mm -hmm. sometimes it's hard to find something that you can make that is good, hot and fresh. But by the time I drive the 15 minutes into the building, you know, like pizza rolls, it seems like I have a hard time getting them to really hang on to their yummy freshness Mm -hmm. by the time I get to the building. But something like that would probably be really good, huh? Oh yeah. That would be a great thing to take because it doesn't have to be super hot and you could just pop them in the oven for a couple of minutes, or even if you don't have them hot, it's still good. Yeah. Hmm. Yummy, yummy. Well, since we're talking about food, my sister brought this um, salad the other day. It was one of those jello salads, which I haven't made in a long time. Do you remember Mm. how you used to always see Mm -hmm. those on the table when you go to somebody's house or at potlucks with pretzels or yeah, she, um, she made one that she just called sidewalk salad. And I have the same recipe, but it was called walking up the sidewalk salad. Never heard of it. And speaking of Virginia, uh, Dottie Marcel years and years ago, when we lived in Virginia, gave it to me when I was a young wife. And she said, it's so named because you can throw it together so quickly that even if company is walking up the sidewalk, Ah. it'll be ready. And so it's one of those kinds that you just throw together. So the recipe that I have is typically uses peach jello. You just throw in there dry with um, <clears throat> vanilla pudding mix, throw it in there dry, a can of crushed pineapple, um, and then you mix all that together really well. And then you just stir in some Cool Whip. Okay. And then you just throw it in your dish and chill it. And it's delicious. And the one Christy brought, <clears throat> sorry, she, hers had, um, it was green. So I think hers was lime jello and maybe lemon pudding or something, I don't know, but it was mm-hmm. really good. Fun. Yeah. Good stuff. Yeah. We'll have to share those recipes next yeah. week. Mm-hmm. I mm-hmm. was going to mention to you um, something, you know, we had a good bit of discussion in the social media groups about the comfort zone podcast from, from this week. And one of the things that Christy Huntsman commented on, you know, I had, I put a poll up there talking about or asking people to contribute. What is it that pushes you out of your comfort zone? And one of the comments that she made was that she doesn't mind speaking or teaching. I'll just read what she wrote. She said, what really pushes me out of my comfort zone is casual conversation. I get so nervous and flustered every time I have to socialize, sometimes so much that I forget what I need to say. My dirty little secret, which is not a dirty little secret. I think it's awesome. Is that (laughs) to get over over this, sometimes I make note cards of what I need to ask people Random things I would love an update for my prayer list about, or even just small talk topics. I'm sure people think I'm a little crazy, but I was convicted long ago not to use my awkward introvertedness as an excuse not to make personal connections with the church. Hmm. And you know, Christy, and I would never have thought of her as, as an awkward introvert. Me neither. Because she's very friendly. Yeah. She MCs the Come for Your Cup retreat. mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But she's the editor of Come for Your Cup, by the way, if that. Somebody yeah. might not be familiar with that. So she says she doesn't mind speaking or teaching. I'm sure that's because she loves what she's talking about when mm-hmm. she's speaking and teaching. Anyway, I asked her to elaborate a little bit on having those little cheat cards because I thought, so <laughs> I'm, I'm picturing myself when someone walks up, flipping through my little note card. Okay, Hang here's on a my second. note card for this person. <laughs> yeah. Let me, hold on a second. Let me ask this question. <laughs> so I asked her your last name. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> One of those Rolodex things that, you know. A little black book. Yeah. So I asked her to elaborate a little bit and she says, I have my Bible case in my arms for a long time. I would tuck my little cheat sheet right on top of my Bible case and hold it up against myself. If I need to glance at it, I can. 
I'm sure people have seen it before. And that always made me feel a little crazy, but I just decided I'd rather people think I'm a little crazy than to think I didn't care. Mm -hmm. And I just thought that was so amazing. And I'm going to start doing that because I find Mm -hmm. myself when I'm meeting someone new, I'm, my mind is already racing ahead to what I'm going to say next, rather than Mm -hmm. I can't even remember their name a minute after they've told me because I'm, I'm trying to think ahead and I don't beat myself up about that because Mm -hmm. I know that I'm just trying to make them feel welcome. But I just thought that was such a great idea to, it's, it's another one of those intentional things to, Mm -hmm. um, to help people feel comfortable and something else about that. The other night I mentioned that, that HOA meeting, we went up to my in-laws former house and all of the people in our neighborhood were there. And there's probably, I don't know how many houses there's at least 13, 14 houses here now that you didn't used to be here and all new people. And, and I just found myself, I didn't, I didn't know very many. I knew one or two, of course, my brother and sister-in-law were there, but um, I wanted to just leave right away. You know, I just wanted to skip out and not make Mm -hmm. casual conversation with people because I didn't know them. And it made me think this is what it's like for people who come to worship Hmm. and they don't know anybody and they just want to skip out. And I've usually, I've thought to myself, I, I, I don't guess I think badly of them, but I always think if for those people who come in and say, well, no one was friendly to me. And I think to myself, well, did you sit on the back row and skip out right as soon yeah. as things were over? Did you try this, to talk to anybody? Right. Yeah. So this made me have more sympathy for them yeah. and, and really just made me understand that I need to go out of my way. And I'm not very good at that. I don't mind introducing myself to someone, but I just realized I, I need to go out of my way to make people feel welcome and, and uh, introduce them to others and try to relate to them because it, I just, I guess I never really felt that before because I'm comfortable in church groups most of the time, but this was just Mm -hmm. a different kind of group. My biggest fear is always, have I already met you? Yeah. And that's what, I mean, it's, I'm serious. That's Mm -hmm. a fear. And I sit there and because sometimes do they look familiar? Am I supposed to know them? Have they been here before? Am I saying, am I supposed to say good to see you again? Or my name is Kathy what's yours, you know, nice to meet you. And, and I've always got that hesitation in the back of my mind. Cause I think, have they been here yet before? And are they a recent visitor or, you know, and so that's what brings out my awkwardness is, and again, it just goes back to putting more intention into it and paying attention yeah. and learning names and yeah, remembering faces. And, uh, well, do you, you know, feel just, like you can just say, I've tried this, just say it. I think I'm supposed to know you, but I am so sorry. I can't remember your name. Yeah. And then they yeah. say, oh, I've, I've not been here or yeah, I've been here for six years. Yeah. I, I still talk to them. Yeah. I just have that whole awkward. Hi. Yeah. Glad you're here. Yeah. Good to see you. It's like, I'm waiting for them to clue me in, you know, mm-hmm. oh, we're happy to be back or, you know, yeah. Yeah. I can always tell when John, he, (laughs) if he does not introduce me to someone, if I walk up and he's talking to them, if he does not introduce me to them, then that means that I'm supposed to say I'm Carla. And because he can't remember their name. Y'all have a system. Yeah. Well, it's kind of an unspoken one. Anytime we go anywhere, John is always like 15 minutes before we get there. He'll say, okay, we do this on the way up to Denver, like reminders of all the students' names and everything. He said, okay, let's go through first year class. I want to remember, see if I can remember everybody's names and the kids' names. And he's, he's good about that. Although I'm the one that has to provide all those names and I don't always remember. I'm better with names yeah. than he is. Mm-hmm. So we make yeah. a team. That is a, that's a good, yeah, of course. Y'all are definitely a team. Well, I think I that's that what about we're y'all. supposed to be married, you know, and we always joke about it. Together we have a full brain. I have half <laughs> and he has the other half. <laughs> there you go. But anyway, I wanted to bring up that idea from Christy and what she had about um, little cheat sheets. Yeah, that was great. great. I'm going to start glad she shared that. Yeah. And somebody gave us a nice compliment about our podcast, but they also added that they loved this little community that's being created in the Facebook group looking up. And so do I. Mm -hmm. Um, It just it's so much fun to see the interaction and to read people's comments and ideas and suggestions like the one you just mentioned Mm -hmm. and. Uh, it's really fun. Yeah. I like how real everybody is. Mm-hmm. I love that. Yeah. So 
Are you having, do you have anything else? Well, not unless you want to see my nail polish. You see that? Uh, it looks pretty. Is it pink? Oh, yes. Pretty. Okay. It's kind of a really spring color. It's called Rose All Day. Rose All Day. <laughs> Cute. Orally, um, but it's right here. Okay. But um, I like it because it's it's kind of a pink, but it's also kind of a neutral. Mm -hmm. It's a really muted, soft pink. It's probably my favorite, favorite color of all time. So you don't see my pick your nails. Yes, I do. Those Nothing. look nice and clean. I don't ever do my fingernails. I just never have. Mm -hmm. I should. I always, I get self-conscious about them when I go somewhere and, and some of them are long and some are short. I don't guess I chew them, but yeah, yeah. I, I probably should pay more attention to it. As long as they're clean, I'm good. I don't do mine very often, especially as we start getting into gardening season, because really what's the point? Yeah. Even with gloves, they start chipping really yeah. quickly. So, and I don't go have them done. I just do them myself. So it's, mm -hmm. All right. Should we get into our topic? <laughs> Enough chit chat. Yeah. Well, today, and this was your idea, and I thought it was such a great idea. We're going Thanks. to talk about what we love about the Bible. Mm -hmm. And so we've each picked three things and we have not shared them with each other because mm -hmm. we thought we talked about whether or not we should share them. But then we figured that there would be enough. There may be crossover, but there would be enough yeah. differences in the way that we uh, approach it. So, yeah. So we're going to talk about what we love about the Bible and I want you to go first. Okay. Why I love the Bible. Number one, uh, I love the fact that it's unchanging. Yeah. And this one has been on my mind so much lately. And I think it's just because it feels like, I don't know if it's because of technological advancements that we have access to information all the time, but I'm amazed at how often things that we think we're told we're true. They come back around and say, "Never mind, that's not right. It's actually this, and it's yeah. something completely opposite." I mean, you think about it in the world of medicine, even um, health and things that we eat. You know, mm -hmm. this is really, really bad for you. Don't eat it. Well, now they're saying it's actually really good for you, or this is really good for you. Actually, it's really bad for you. And if you're looking up information. You can, you can find the most contradictory information, you know, mm -hmm. um, I think I've mentioned this example before, but women in intermittent fasting, you know, you can find all of these sites out there saying it's supposed to be really good for you. You can find an equal number of sites out there saying women should not do it. Mm -hmm. So how do you know what's right? How do you know it's true and how you can't trust anything anymore, even yeah. if they claim to be scientifically backed. Mm -hmm. So that's my number one reason that I love the Bible is it is truth. It is always truth. It is unchanging. It's always reliable, always relevant. You can trust it. Yeah. And it's not going to change. It doesn't matter how long you've been reading it. It doesn't matter if decades go by. I mean, you can go back and read books now that were published decades ago that are irrelevant now, mm -hmm. but yeah. it'll never be that way with God's word. And we change, you know, we're not the same people that we were 15, 20 years ago. We change, but we still approach the Bible and it's truth. And it's, it's exactly what we need, you know? Yeah. And so that's my favorite thing about it. And I've found Psalm 119 verse 160, all your words are true and all your righteous laws are eternal. And of course, that are all the passages about the word of God never fading away, mm -hmm. but to me, particularly is just that emphasis on always reliable, always yeah. unchanging in its nature. And I think back to, um, do you ever, do you ever go back in your memories on social media or Facebook mm -hmm. and you see like some of those very earliest posts that you did maybe yeah. when you first got on A little embarrassing? Oh my, I don't know about you, but it that is was back when it was, uh, you had to finish the sentence. It yes. said is. And then you right. finish the sentence. Yes. When I mm -hmm. see those, it is so cringy. You know, I, I can just look back on these things and I think, oh, mm -hmm. brother, I'm so embarrassed. And, yeah. you know, we, we just, there are so many things that we just look back on and we think, oh no, oh no. And, you know, that we need something dependable. Mm -hmm. People need something that they can feel secure in when everything else is rapidly changing, evolving, mm -hmm. feeling less and less dependable or insecure. And so that's my number one for 
for why I love the Bible because it's have you ever, there's some kind of a book. And I think if I'm not mistaken, I think it's called none of these diseases. Hmm. And I don't remember any uh, details and I'll have to look it up. And I hope it, this is the one that I'm thinking of, but it talks about um, different things that the Bible has proven to be true over time. And I think one of them is um, the, the circumcision on the eighth day, mm -hmm. because on the eighth day is when I think it's vitamin K Personally. spikes in the blood. Mm -hmm. And so that causes clotting. Mm -hmm. So that's one of those things that God knew before doctors knew it. Now they give them a shot of vitamin K before they circumcise little baby boys. So they don't need the, um, the natural, I guess, clotting. But um, that's one of the things there's, there's things like that they talked about, like going outside the camp to, to go to the bathroom and covering it up and how God knew and taught, I guess that was in Leviticus probably taught them to do that so that other people didn't catch a disease from the bacteria mm -hmm. that's associated. Um, there's just, there's lots of different things like that, that prove that the Bible's been right all along. There's a, yeah. the passage, I, I want to say it's in the Psalms or maybe Joe that talks about the paths in the sea mm -hmm. that Matthew Fontaine Maury, why can I remember that? And I can't remember something super yeah. important. Who's buried in Richmond, Virginia, by the way, Hollywood <laughs> Cemetery. It's in the Oh, he is? Mm -hmm. Oh, cool. So he discovered there's paths in the sea. And I guess now big ships use those paths, if you will, to in shipping channels so that they don't have to fight the current. Um, so yeah, there's lots of things. It makes you wonder when you're reading through the pages of the Bible, what's in here now that we still haven't discovered that we'll mm -hmm. find out to be true later, but there's even quarantine th things. Um, lepers were to be outside the camp and I don't know uh, any more about that, but so we have different yeah, different ways that God yeah. knew before we knew it. And, and the fact that life is in the blood, Mm -hmm. God's been saying that all along, even though we were doing bloodletting and <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Scientific foreknowledge is what you're talking about. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. And I may have, I may be wrong about the title of that book, but I'll go back and check. But I was, when you were talking, I was also thinking about James, is it James two that, and I had written it for one of my points uh, about how there, there is no shadow of turning no mm -hmm. shifting shadow with God that he's mm -hmm. always the same. So variation. Yeah. yeah. And when you think about how we are so fickle and yeah. moody, I've there's times I've thought about this with myself because different days I feel different ways, but mm -hmm. you don't have to worry about God ever being different. Yep. So that's a great one. I love that. Mm -hmm. So say it again, that the Bible never changes. Mm hmm it's always, it's always the same. Mm -hmm. Okay. This, this is, it's kind of funny. My first one is, um, kind of, kind of similar, kind of the opposite, but my first one is <laughs> that the Bible will change you if you are willing and honest and it, it has changed me. So the Bible, it, it will change you. Mm -hmm. If there are things that you don't like about yourself, and I'm sure we all have those things that we don't like about ourselves. We don't have to be that way. We don't have to stay that way. It's not permanent. Uh, we can, we can allow the word of God to change our heart because we can train our minds. And I was trying to come up with different passages that talked about this in Romans 12 verses one through three. It's talking about our bodies and our minds. He says, I urge you, brethren, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies a living and holy sacrifice acceptable to God. And that's our spiritual service. And then he goes on to say, don't be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind mm -hmm. so that you may prove what the will of God is, that which is good and acceptable and perfect. Um, so there's, there's times that I've thought back to my who I was in the past. And I'm obviously still trying to conform to be who God wants me to be. But I, I used to be very sarcastic. And again, this is one of those things. I can't remember if I've said this on a podcast, but I figure <laughs> that not everyone will remember every word we've ever said. So if or I even repeat listen myself, to yeah, every episode. So. Yeah. So if I repeat myself, I'm going to try not to stress about that, but there was a time that I was pretty sarcastic and I, uh, I think that you either speak sarcasm or you don't. Mm -hmm. 
It's kind of one of those languages that not everyone understands. And I was sarcastic to John and he does, he's not sarcastic at all. He just doesn't, he doesn't get it. He doesn't like it at all. And I remember saying to him, even Jesus was sarcastic. And he came right back and said to me, not with the people that he loved. Oh, yeah. (laughs) Yeah. And so I had to go back and look and really understand what he was saying that, of course, Jesus using sarcasm is kind of iffy, maybe even to call it sarcasm, but no, he was not sarcastic with those that he loved. So I realized that sarcasm, I don't want to be that way. And I started looking into why I shouldn't and praying to not be that way. So there's sarcasm. I I tend to be cynical Mm -hmm. and I don't think that's a, a way to be. And distrustful, you know, you were talking a minute ago about how um, I don't trust people anymore, you know, with all the Mm -hmm. COVID stuff. And Mm -hmm. and even before that, everyone has an agenda. Yes. Everyone either believes this or that, and they're not really looking. I'm making a big blanket statement. I realize this is not completely true, but everyone already has their mind made up about whatever. And so Mm -hmm. they're going to go looking for proof of that. And they're going to find what they're looking for. And you can mm-hmm. find an, you know, proof for whatever you be- already believe. Right. So um, I just tend to be just distrustful because of that. And I don't want to be that way, but I can, I can trust God. Like you said, he's not ever going to change. I've not always been honest and sincere and, and just things like that. So I, I think that the Bible, if we, if we go to the word of God, with the intent of Mm self-evaluation, it will change us. And I know that it has changed me. Uh, It's powerful. Hebrews 4.12 says that it's powerful. It's living and active and sharper than any sword, piercing to the division of soul and spirit. It's able to judge the thoughts and intentions of the heart. Mm -hmm. And again, I think sometimes we, we think this of other people, but do we really, you know, are we aiming it at ourselves? Are we putting that sword in our own spirit and heart. So I think it's key to be self-evaluating and, and, uh, and that will, the Bible will do that. I love the Bible because it changes you and, and we all need to be changed. And I especially needed to be changed. It's convicting. And if you want to jump in, you can stop me, but there's uh, Psalm 69, five and six is something that was very personal to me. And it convicted me of uh, during a time that I had, um, some secret sin hidden. And I've talked pretty openly about this and I'm not going to go into the whole thing, but there was some things that I was keeping from John, nothing terribly horrible, but if it was just financial stuff that I was, to me, I told myself I was protecting him from it, but that wasn't really true. I just didn't want to tell him about it, but someone posted (laughs) Psalm 69, five and six, which says, Oh God, it is you who knows my folly and my wrongs are not hidden from you. May those who wait for you not be ashamed through me. O Lord God of hosts. May those who seek you not be dishonored through me. O God of Israel. Mm. Oh, that just pierced me. It just, it convicted me so much because I never, I never was under any assumption that God didn't know what was going on in my life. What I was hiding. I knew that I couldn't hide from him, but but when I thought about how it might affect John and, and that he might be dishonored because of something that I knew. So that passage was just so convicting to me, Psalm 69. Yeah. And there's many of those passages that will convict. And I know that the Bible, it shapes your character. It softens our character, thinking about Ephesians four and all of those, those things that uh, were to walk in a manner worthy of the calling. Mm-hmm knowing the worth of what God did for us and to be humble and gentle and patient and being tolerant. Those are things that are not super popular to be, but that's what God calls us to be. And again, it, the word will change you if you put it in your heart and then it provides peace. That's another one of those things that will change you when you, when you go from being worried and being anxious and, and just um, so afraid of what the next day holds, but yet when you have the word in your heart. And, and this is another thing I know personally, you have the word in your heart and it will bring you peace. Isaiah 26 is the step Isaiah 26, verse three, the steadfast of mine, you will keep in perfect peace because he trusts in you. Mm. So I love the word because 
it changes, changes you, it changes me. It has changed me. I know I'm a different person because of the Bible. Makes me think about the psalmist that says, um, open my eyes that I may see wondrous, was it things or truths from your law? Mm-hmm. And how, you know, maybe many times when I'm spending time in the word, I'm preparing for a lesson or I'm thinking about something that I'm working on, or maybe even thinking about somebody else, you know, yeah. but the psalmist is saying, open my eyes that I might see them. And you can't help mm-hmm. but see the implication there so that I can apply it to my heart and my yeah. life and see as James talks about with that mirror, using the word as the mirror to see ourselves as we are and then do something about it. You know, if we approach it with humility and yeah, um, the willingness to change. And that makes me think of um, when Jesus showed himself to the apostles on the Sea of Galilee after the resurrection. And remember Peter, he goes through that little dialogue with Peter and says, do you love me? Do you love me? Do you love me? And, but he says something to Peter to follow me, to feed my sheep. But at the end of that dialogue, Peter says to Jesus, well, what about him? And Jesus says, basically, <laughs> this is what we used to say to the boys. You pay attention to you. Yeah. And that's kind of what it seemed like <laughs> Jesus exactly. was saying. You worry about you. You don't need to worry about someone else. <clears throat> of course, like you said, we prepare lessons and preachers preach and, and we're to teach. But I think for them, for the most part, we, we use the word to convict ourselves and to, to learn and grow ourselves. And then we can help others, help teach others. Mm-hmm. Good. So, so far we've got, because it's unchanging and because it'll change us. Yeah. Love it. It's unchanging and it's changing. And it's changing. (laughs) Exactly. In a different way. Yeah. (laughs) Good. Okay. What's your number two? All right. My second one, there's always something to learn. That's what I love about the Bible. There's always something to learn. And I was thinking about that along the lines of you, you don't ever outlive the Bible. You don't ever outgrow the Bible. Bible. You know, it's not like you reach that level of I've got it all figured out and I know everything there is to know. And so now I can just coast. I'm a Bible scholar and I've reached, I've maxed out, you know, and not in any sort of way discouraging. It's not like, um, why try? Because you'll never learn it all. It's not that way. We can know and learn the Bible, but just in fact that the more you study, the more you find. And It's like your favorite hobby, you know, what keeps it your favorite hobby is that you're always learning about it and trying something new and, you know, honing your craft almost. And, um, and the more you learn about it, the more you want to know about it and to continue to grow in it. And that's, that's how it is with God's word. It's just that there's always going to be something new to see and learn. And, and I think about even with our own experiences in life you know, you might, because of something you've just experienced, you might go back and read a passage that's so familiar to you. Maybe you've read it a hundred times, but now you see it a little bit differently because of your experiences, you know, whether it's a loss or um, a sin comes to light and is exposed or, you know, just anything like that. Now you go back and you reread those verses a little bit differently and it touches your heart differently. So that's my number two is there's, it's, there's always something to learn about God's word. I, it's funny. I was thinking about this and I meant to look up the quote I had to just now, but Jerome, St. Jerome Mm -hmm. said, the scriptures are shallow enough for a babe to come and drink without fear of drowning and deep enough for theologians to swim in without ever touching the bottom. Mm -hmm. I love that because I think it's so true. Like you're saying, you can, you can come back to something and and it just hits you differently because, because of an experience. There's another quote that I'll have to share later that talks about, there are places in the Bible that can't touch you until you have reached the place for where, for what those scriptures are for I'm them butchering it but it's a beautiful yeah um quote that it, you know when you've lost your spouse mm-hmm. things are going to be more comforting or um when you have done wrong you're going to be convicted mm-hmm. so yeah yeah you're right there's so much to, to learn that we'll, we'll never we'll never learn it all mm-hmm. 
and it's, it's, it's exciting that there's a, uh, Jim Word used to say, and I know it didn't come from him, but I heard it first from him. He said, you can get into the Bible, get into the word until it gets into you. Mm-hmm. Because I think some people have said, I'm just not interested in the Bible. I want to be, but I'm just, it's too confusing or it's too deep, or I don't know where to start. But when you pray about it and you ask God to give you a desire to study more, and then you start getting into it. And it's just exciting to see what, what the Bible has to say. Yeah. Whoever and wherever you are in your walk, Mm -hmm. it's, you're the perfect student for the word of God. And it's perfect for you at whatever level. It's not like some classes that you take, should I be in the beginner class or the intermediate class or the advanced class, you know, wherever you are in your walk and you open up the Bible, it's just right for you. Yeah. And you're, you're just jump in wherever you are and start studying and you'll learn something and you'll grow. And, you know, going back to your number one reason, it'll change you wherever you are. Yeah. That's one of the things I love about Bible writing, scripture writing, because it it makes you slow down and see things that you haven't seen before. And I Mm -hmm. think that's one of the places where we slip up with scripture writing sometimes is comparing ourselves with someone else. And I try, when I do my own, I just, I I try not to care what it looks like even because it's for me, Mm -hmm. it's not for anyone else. And we're just at different places in our walks. And there's things that, like you said, it's going to sit differently because of where I am in life than it will for someone who is 20 or someone who's 90. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I love that. That's great. Yeah. And it's fun to spend time with people who love learning and yeah and digging and studying. It's just contagious. You know, um, there have been a few times when, at, especially while we're at Bear Valley and we go to one of those, you know, staff retreats mm-hmm. and all the, it seems like sometimes all the men would be huddled around. Somebody's had their Bible open and maybe they were doing a keyword study and they saw a connection, you know, and yeah. next thing you know, all the heads are around uh-huh. that Bible and you can see the buzzing going on and yeah. the energy and the excitement and, Oh, I've never seen that before. Oh, that's so cool. You know, mm-hmm. it's, it's just contagious. And well, that's uh, part of our friendship. Share. You know, that's part of our friendship is that we can talk about things. And I think that's something that's enhanced our marriage too, John's mm-hmm. and mine, just because we can talk about things. It has been better since I've been more in the word. Our, our marriage has been better. So it has helped us, but it's funny you say that because my office that used to be your office, just at the very end of the hall Mm -hmm. and you can hear everything that goes on down the hall, everything, everything, (laughs) everything. (laughs) you can also hear what's going on down in the library. Sometimes it's at the same time coming from both directions, (laughs) but, uh, you can hear Michael say, Hey, have you ever seen this? And he's trucking on down into Denny's office and, And then, yeah, other people show up and they start talking Bible and it's fun to eavesdrop on, on Bible discussions. I like to hear what they're saying about those things. So, yeah. Okay. So yours is, let's recap. Mm -hmm. You do it. You're better than me. First, your first first one. The Bible is unchanging and there's always something to learn. Okay. And my first one was, I love the Bible because See, I'm having to look at my notes because it changes you if you're willing and honest. Okay. My number two is I love the realness of the Bible. Mm. Is realness a word? Yeah, sure. Okay. If it's not, it should be. It's a word. So so I love the realness of the Bible and the fact that um, scripture gives you everything warts and all. Mm. (laughs) I don't know where that expression came from, but I've heard it all my life. It's not just black ink on a page. It's real. It's a real documentation of history of real people in real places. And so it talks about how we should be, how we shouldn't be. And it gives us examples of people. Uh, It doesn't say don't be like this person, but you, you Mm -hmm. see there's, you know, think about the, um, and I have other examples, but it just came to mind talking about Eli who had sons that were worthless sons. Mm -hmm. And so good people had bad children, you know, so that's kind of comforting to those of us today my children are wonderful children, (laughs) but you know, sometimes me as a child, you know, I did bad things that didn't reflect on my parents. Mm -hmm. It reflected on my decision-making, but anyway, I was just thinking about David and how David is 
it started off talking about how he was the youth that killed the giant Goliath. And then he, he became the man that danced in the streets in Jerusalem and made his wife mad. And he was the man who saw a woman from the rooftop and, and he lusted after her, you know, he looked at her while she was for what I don't, we don't know if she was naked on the rooftop, but he mm-hmm. saw her and he lusted after her and he went sent for her talk about sexual harassment mm-hmm. and using hit the, the position and the power that he had to bring her to him. Yeah. And he caused her to commit adultery and he sinned and then tried to cover it up in the, just a horrible way, you know, by mm-hmm. taking her husband and, and basically having him murdered. Mm -hmm. But then he, that was the same man who, when he was confronted by Nathan and, and told, you know, Nathan told him this story about this little ewe lamb and, and how he had all of this, this man had all of his own, but he went and took the the little ewe lamb of someone else. And David was just incensed by that. But Nathan said in the old King James, thou art the man. man. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but you know, that could have made David mad and it may have, but what he said was, I have done wrong. You know, he, he was convicted by that and he begged for God's forgiveness. And when you read Psalm 51, you see the heart of David, but then, you know, that wasn't the end of it because he went on to be a bad father. When you look and see what happened between Amnon and Tamar and Absalom Mm -hmm. and how he uh, just the family was torn apart and Absalom went off to the North and David, it was five years, at least five years before he saw Absalom. And it talks about how he longed for him, but he didn't do anything about it, but he, it's just almost like he wrecked his family. So there's just some ugly things about David. And yet God describes him as being a man after his own heart. And did you see the, the, um, in the chosen, how, uh, I think it was discussion between Jesus and John, John the Baptist. And he talks about David. He said, he's the man who grilled and died in bed with a teenager. Oh. <laughs> it, it was funny scene, you know, it was a little bit like, Hey, wait a minute. You're talking about King David there, but you know, Abishag was that young right. woman that mm-hmm. there was never any hint that there was anything bad between mm-hmm. them, but that she kept him warm in his mm-hmm. old age. I just thought that was funny the way he said that. <laughs> but David, despite all of those terrible things that we read about in scripture, um, Acts 7 says he found favor in God's eyes and, and Acts 13, 22, quoting the Old Testament says he was a man after God's heart. So warts and all, it's real. Mm-hmm. And then you think about Peter and the progression from, from when he was called by Jesus, you know, in that, that scene where Jesus tells him to, to well, he catches all those fish and it convicts Peter for whatever reason. And he says, I'm a sinful man. And he surrendered and followed Jesus. But you you know, you think about the impulsiveness of Peter and the Mm -hmm. things that he said, and, and he just loved Jesus, but, but Jesus rebuked him more than once, you know, because of things that he said and did. Anyway, I guess my point is that same Peter who had all those faults and, and those silly things about him. And I relate so much to Peter, but yet he's the one that turned into the man. And you've made this point before. And I know we've, we've talked about it in our personal discussions, how that's the same Peter that wrote the letters, you know, first and second Peter are the, Mm -hmm. are they letters? Mm -hmm. Are they letters? Yeah, sure. (laughs) (laughs) He wrote first and second Peter (laughs) and those things that he says in there, you know, he's the one that preached the first, that gospel sermon on the Southern steps, that powerful sermon that he says that God's made this man, Lord in Christ, the one that you crucified, he was very confrontational mm-hmm. with those Jews. And, uh, so he went from not standing up for Jesus to standing up for Jesus. Yeah. Very strongly. Mm-hmm. But that again, is part of the, the realness of the Bible that yeah. you don't, it doesn't present just all of the great things about people, but it presents the, the bad things too. And you can learn things from both. So there's, there's other, I'll not keep going, but I was thinking about Paul too, and how he changed and, Mm -hmm. and grew. And I love how, how real we are. We learn things about people from the Bible. Uh, It reminds me of a study I did when I was teaching in the women's program. And I created this little charts because it's just laid out so beautifully what you're talking about. And my first example is God used a weak man and that was Samson. Mm -hmm. 
and just you can just list out all the areas that he struggled in his human weakness, you know, his fleshly desires or whatever. Just so many times in the Bible says that he gave into this and he did this and he committed this. And but then you can also list out how many times God used him. And it's it's worded that way in the strength of the spirit or God gave him this the power or God gave him the strength or whatever. And mm -hmm. And even though he struggled, he's still listed in Hebrews 11 mm -hmm. as one of those who live by faith, you know, yeah. and in the end was able to conquer through God giving him strength. But and then the other one was Peter also. So mm -hmm. and in his I called it God used a growing man yeah, and did the same thing, just listed out all the times that he was either impetuous or you know, just really messed up or said something dumb or <laughs> mm -hmm. and um you know, cut off Malx's ear, whatever it might be, but then all the ways that God continually used him. And with his though, you can see the growth. You can see the further on you get, there's fewer and fewer of those mistakes and mess ups and stumbles as he continues to grow stronger spiritually. Yeah. You don't see yeah. that as much with Samson, mm -hmm. but he still was able to come out on top. But with Peter, you can see it just this side dwindling down as yeah. this side continues to grow. Would you send me that list? You still sure. have it, I guess, somewhere. Mm -hmm. I would love yeah. to see that. And I probably have it somewhere, but um, I would love to have that. Sure. And the point is that we are the same. It's encouraging to know that we can have those same mm -hmm. real faults and failures and, and lack of faith and lack of strength and um, just mess up royally. And mm -hmm. yet God still wants us and still uses us as where we can be valuable to him because it's really tempting when we fail when we know we failed especially really badly to feel like god can't use me anymore but yet look at these people that god used in in tremendous ways so so it's real and maybe even good to know that we should be real with each other and yeah. not in the way that we glory in sinful behavior of the past or you know, party, our party days or anything, yeah. not in any kind of way like that. And, and not in any way that we overlook things because that's a part of our past or anything like that, but that we should not ever strive to give off an air of perfection or, mm -hmm. or, but that we are all imperfect and we sin and we're just striving to do that less and less as God uses us more and more. Yeah. And we let the word change us, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I love Good. the way you said that. Thanks. Okay. What's your third? My third is that the Bible is the answer for everything. I love the Bible because it's the answer or the solution for everything. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, it, it kind of goes back to my number one, you know, where do you go for good, solid advice anymore these days? How do you know where to go and who to trust? And like you say, I'm, I'm kind of cynical with what I find online now. Sure. Who's backing this study? You know, it's yeah. like, who's, yeah. who's uh, going to generate some kind of profit out of this study, but, but the Bible can be the trusted answer for everything, no matter what we're going through. And the first thing that came to mind was just in this spiritual warfare that we're in with Satan, you know, Ephesians six talks about it being our armor and mm -hmm. that's how we stand. That's how we stand firm. That's how we stand against all the things we want to stand against. But then I just spent some time in Psalm 119 mm -hmm. and that's the Psalm where the whole thing focuses on the word. And I think there's what six, different terms mm -hmm. that refer to the word, whether it's mm -hmm. statutes or testimonies or law or word or mm -hmm. whatever it might be and all, but just a handful of verses. And there's what, 176 Lots. verses in that Psalm. Yeah. And all, but just a few of them mention the word somehow. So <clears throat> I just went through there and I thought, what are the things that we face today and still encounter and when you read it, it's just so relevant still. Um, do you ever find yourself just going through the motions hmm. on autopilot spiritually, you know, just showing up? And how many times does the psalmist say, revive me according to your word? And or um, or feeling weak and discouraged um, if there are times when you don't know what to do. If you're at times when you're wondering what your purpose is, I mean, these things are specifically listed in that Psalm and the Psalmist always says, 
but because of your testimonies, you know, I know my purpose or I have strength or whatever it might be. Um, I've hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. Mm -hmm. Battling temptation and that one that we keep praying about because we keep falling into, you know, let's put the word in our hearts or um, I love how someone 19 comes right out and says, how can a young person stay on the path of purity? There's mm. a question for the ages. Yeah. Well, the answer is by living according to your word. Psalm 119 verse nine, is your soul weary with sorrow? You know, are you just exhausted and tired because you've been carrying sorrow for a long time? The word will strengthen you. It says in verse 28, do you want to be able to answer anybody who taunts you? Um, trust in the word, Psalm 119, verse 42. Do you want to have good judgment? Mm -hmm. Verse 66, how to respond when you are wronged without cause. I mean, they're very specific things that we can face. That one's verse 78. Um, when you feel like you're lacking wisdom or insight or understanding, verses 98, 99, and 100. Um, do you want to get to the point where you hate the wrong path? I love how that one's put. Uh, verse 104, do you need preservation through suffering? Verse 107, are you looking for refuge or hope? Verse 114, do you need sustenance? Verse 116, do you want to make sure no sin has rule over you? Verse 133, uh, are you trying to find delight even when trouble and distress come upon you? Verse 143, are you still seeking great peace? Verse 165. And do you want to keep from stumbling? Verse 165. So all these specific scenarios that we still find ourselves in and the answer in every single one of those verses is get back to the word. Yeah. Go into the word. Just spend time in the word. And it sounds so simple, mm -hmm. but let's put that to the test. And in fact, that's what the psalmist says at the end of the psalm. Verse 138 says they are all these things all of these precepts and laws, they are fully trustworthy. Hmm. And in verse 140, he says, your promises have been thoroughly tested and your servant loves them. Mm. So it's the answer for everything. That's so great. Mm -hmm. um, you had a lesson at PTV one time, and I think it was entitled, um, what to do when you are feeling, I can't remember exactly the word, but when you're feeling cold, when you're, in other words, when you're feeling a distance from not falling away necessarily, mm -hmm. but when you're not feeling close to God, you remember what I'm talking about? Yeah, it was titled? a two part series and it's from that song. So one of them was when my love for man grows weak yeah. and when my love for Christ grows weak. Well, and I remember you quoted, um, it was a time, it was very timely for me. I don't remember what year it was, but you, you quoted that song, the Psalm that says, and I think it's in 119, but it may not be uh, my soul clings to the dust, revive mm -hmm. me according to your word. And yeah, like you said, it, it sounds simple and it really is simple. It's not a, um, an instant process. It's mm -hmm. something you have to be intentional about and you have to get into it and, and be committed to it. But the, the reward of being in the word is just something you can't even, you can't even put into words mm -hmm. because it provides everything that you need when you need it. And because it's in your heart, which means it's in your mind and it comes out when you just, when you need it, 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 uh, it's mag magical. If you want to use that word, powerful is a better word mm -hmm. because God said it would be powerful. And it and really is reminding ourselves of that. I think takes away some of the fretting of the unknown. We know things happen because we've already experienced them. We know that more things are going to happen. Things that might cause us to ask, you know, what are we going to do? Um, how did I land here? <laughs> yeah. How did I find myself in this situation again? You know, whatever, how are we going to get through this? Um, what those kinds of questions that come up, they're never fun. And kind of make us feel ill in the pit of our stomach and, mm -hmm. you know, and just scared or whatever it might be. But if just reminding ourselves is, but spending time in the word, um, we might still experience those things and not quite know how, what the next step is, but we can know that everything that we need is going to be there. 
and that mm-hmm. God has given us everything we need according to life and godliness. And that should at least alleviate some of that fretting and that worry and that, um, are we going to make it through? Yeah. Because we can know, yes, we are. And yes, knowing are. that he cares. Yes. That he cares what we're going through, no matter what it is, what seems either small or big to mm-hmm. us is he, he's been there. He, he knows what we're going through. He knows us. And foresaw everything mm-hmm. so that the word would be complete for everything. Right. And see if I can say this, that makes sense. Um, when, when you've been in the word and you have seen, you've been far enough in your life that you can look back and see how he's working in your life. It, this is something we've talked about before, but you know, it gives you the confidence that there is the answer. Like you're talking about that. You might not be able to see what it is. You might not see it right away. You might not see it for five years. You might not ever see it, but God sees it. He, he knows what the answer is and he's provided the answer. The answer is always to trust him Mm -hmm. and, and that you may not know exactly the answer, but that he has the answer. And that's very comforting. I love what you did with Psalm 119. I've gone through there and listed out the, the, the words for the word and then Mm -hmm. what it does for you because it's very methodical in the way that it is laid out, but I've never looked at it kind of in a different light. Like you're saying to go to Psalm 119, to see what the psalmist struggled with that we struggle with and what his answer is the same as our answer could be today. So that's, well, and the other side of that is, you know, with Psalm 119 is go through and see the psalmist's part in all of that. Mm -hmm. You know, it wasn't passive. And as, as powerful and active as the word is for the psalmist, the psalmist is, you know, equally active in seeking that mm-hmm. and Digging searching for, for that and longing for that and, and has the desire and praying for that. And so it's twofold, you know, mm-hmm. it's right here and has all the power and the answers and everything that we need, but we have to do our part in coming to it. It's like um, Proverbs is it, it's early in Proverbs. I don't, I don't remember if it's chapter three, but it's, you know, the word and we'll do all of these things, keep you in security and uphold you. And, but it's a, if then proposition, Mm -hmm. if you seek and search and treasure and, you know, hold in your heart, then the word will establish you and strengthen you and, you know, all of these things. So it's, it's twofold. We do our part and it's not, it's not something that's torturous, you know, it's a joy. Mm -hmm. And the more you get into it, the more you want to get into it. And I loved what it was, uh, Janine Underwood Mm -hmm. said this week about praying to go, not just praying that things would work out for them to go to Russia, but praying that she would want to go Mm -hmm. and that she was amazed how God provided that desire to go. And it's a scary prayer to pray, It is, but it, um, but she said it, it was effective for her. And I think if we pray to, to want to be in the word, mm-hmm. pray for more desire to know what God um, has to say to us and he will, he'll grant that he'll give us that wisdom. You know, James talks about ask for wisdom. Mm-hmm. So um, yeah, we, we can get more into the word until it gets into us. Okay. What's your third one? My third one is uh, we grow to know the heart of God because of the Bible. And ah, that was my bonus one. <laughs> Remember we said, maybe we should yeah. come up with an extra in case we've got too much yeah. crossover. That yeah. was my bonus one. I'm glad that we haven't crossed over too much. I'm surprised yeah, we didn't, but I, mm-hmm. I, I love that we didn't, but we can grow to know the heart of God and know mm-hmm. who he is and what he wants for me and how he feels about me and what he expects of me. We can know everything about the heart of God, because it's in the pages of the Bible. So I wrote these things down because of the Bible. I can know how God describes himself. And this was kind of like, um, the book gentle and lowly. That's how Jesus described himself as being meek and lowly in heart. Mm -hmm. I'm, if I read, right, this is the only place that God describes himself, uh, with qualities. And he said, this was when he was talking to Moses, the Lord passed by in front of him and proclaimed the Lord, the Lord, God, compassionate and gracious, Mm -hmm. slow to anger and abounding in loving kindness and truth. 
who keeps loving kindness for thousands, who forgives iniquity, transgression, and sin, yet he will by no means leave the guilty unpunished. So that's a lot to know about God, how he describes himself. He's compassionate. He's gracious, full of grace, slow to anger. He abounds in grace and loving kindness and truth. And he for, he's forgiving, but he's not going to leave the, the guilty and punished. So it's not all, you know, fun stuff, great stuff. But I mean, we want God to be a just God. And he tells us he's going to, he will hold us accountable for sin. Mm -hmm. so also because of the Bible, I know that God does not change, which goes back to what you were talking about. The Bible doesn't change. It's always the same, but God doesn't change. Malachi 3, 6, he does not change. Hebrews 13, 8, he's the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. James 1, 17, everything good is from him with whom there is no variation or shifting shadow. Think about how shadows, you know, the, the clouds that move across the sky and the shadows are always changing, but there is not even any hint of that with God. So because of the Bible, I know that God doesn't change because of the Bible. I know God knows me and I know how he feels about me. And I love this, you know, when we feel insecure about how other people feel about us, or we think they don't even know who I am. You know, you go to a place like PTP mm -hmm. and there's these crowds of people and you can sometimes feel alone because you think you look around and there's so many people and none of them know you, mm -hmm. but it's pretty incredible to think that the God that made everything around us, when I'm in Colorado, look at the mountains and I know the God that made those mountains, he knows me. He knows what's going on in my mind right now. He knows what's going on in my heart, in my life, the things that I care about, the things that I'm worried about and struggle about. It's just, it's mind blowing to think that he knows all of those things about us. Uh, Psalm 139 verses one through six, you've searched and known me. You know, when I sit down, when I rise up, you understand my thought from afar, you scrutinize my path and my lying down. You're intimately acquainted with all my ways. Even before there is a word on my tongue, behold, Lord, you know it all. I love this part. You have enclosed me behind and before and laid your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It's too high. I can't attain to it. So he knows everything about me and he longs for me. Isaiah 13, 30, 18, the Lord longs to be gracious to you. That's, that's just, do we long to be gracious to each other? You know, there's times that I just don't really want to extend grace to people. They really annoy me or they hurt my feelings or whatever. And, mm -hmm. and yet I'm so much more worse, the worst toward God and the way I am to him, but yet he longs to show that grace and mercy to me. Mm -hmm. It says he waits on high to have compassion on me. How can you not love a God that, that is this way, that feels this way about you? We love God because he first loved us. We understand love because God loves us. Um, so I, because of the Bible, I know God knows me. I know how he feels about me because of the Bible. I know what God expects of me, Micah six, eight to do, to do justice, love mercy, and walk humbly with God. Deuteronomy 11, um, there's blessings. If you listen to him, uh, his commands, there's the cursing. If you turn aside from him, he doesn't pull any punches. There's things he expects from us, but he doesn't hide those things from us. You know, there's another thing about people changing. Sometimes we, one day they expect us to, to call them and be their best friend. The next day, they don't want to have anything to do with us, mm -hmm. but yet God is not like that at all. Uh, we know exactly what he expects from us. John 14, 15, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. Uh, because of the Bible, I know the grace that he loves to extend to me. Romans 5, 8, while we were yet sinners, he died, Christ died for us. Psalm 25, uh, all the paths of the Lord are loving kindness and truth. So I know we probably are going way too long because of the Bible. I know I can trust him to keep his promises because of the Bible. I know that his judgment is always fair. One of my favorite passages is first Peter two 20 and 21 that talks about how, when he was, when Jesus was uh, persecuted, he didn't persecute back. He didn't treat them badly in return. Um, he didn't, he didn't seek to get back at anyone, but it goes on to say that he just kept on entrusting himself to the one that judges justly. Mm 
-hmm. And when there's times that we just don't understand people, we don't understand how they can be so judgmental, how they can um, expect things from us or from people that we love that are not anywhere in scripture Mm -hmm. or just pharisaical in the way that they treat people. Yet we can keep trusting ourselves to the God who will judge us justly and just be thankful that God is the the judge and not those people. So there's, there's many more. I know that, uh, but we can know God because of the pages of the Bible. We know who he is and what he is and how he feels about us. And I, I just think that that might be my favorite thing. You saved the best for last. Yeah. And I think it's a testimony to his love for us too, because it shows that he wants to have a relationship with us it's hard to have a relationship with somebody if you don't really know them. Yeah. You know, we say, you know, as Christians, we're to love everybody. And we say that, but it's the people that we spend time with and get to know. Mm -hmm. And the more we know them, the more, the easier it is to love them and, and to have that relationship. So God reveals himself to us through his word so that we can know him and love him and have a relationship with him. And I think back to uh, when Jesus walk the earth. And he said, if you know me, you know, the father, if you've seen me, you've seen the father, you know, he even sent Jesus here, of course, to seek and save the lost, but also, so we'd have yet another way of learning about him and Mm -hmm. knowing the father. Yeah. That's a really good one to end on. Yeah. Well, I have another one. What's your bonus one? It provides baby names. (laughs) I was just thinking about all of the the fun names in the Bible. And so if you're just, I just thought this would be a bonus one for those of you who are looking for names for your child to be born. There's Dodo in 2 Samuel 23. There's Ishbi Benob. That's a good one. You could call him Ham for short. Yeah. There's Ham because we've always wanted a child named Ham. I think we could also have beef and pork and (laughs) sausage and there's mushy have you ever heard that name it's in exodus six there's two boat two brothers named us and buzz so if you're going to have twins there you go that's in genesis 22 then for your little girl and these these older names are coming back you know the old-fashioned mm-hmm. names so there's hulda there's jockabed there's katura there's sapphira there's shifra and pua so i just thought you know it's bonus. That's my All bonus. Kinds of options. What I Good. love about the Bible is that it provides baby names. <laughs> it's cute. <laughs> it's dumb. No, but. it was good. Okay. All right. Should we do our random question? Yep. Random question. Okay. Our random question is if you could only dress in one color for the rest of your life, what would it be? It's probably hard for you because you wear color. Well, but I, I probably would pick black. Because, oh. yeah, I wear, I, I guess. That surprises me. Well, black is slimming. Yes. And it goes with everything. You know, you can, um, what's the word where you put, you can accessorize, accessorize. with, mm-hmm. with black, with so many different things and uh, it's easy. So, yeah, sorry. That's, that's all I could come up with was black. Huh. Okay. What's yours? Well, I really, I, I thought it'd be a lot easier than it was because I love to wear like khaki and mm-hmm. white and olive green and white and, and all, but I finally decided that my answer is going to be navy because um, that's probably, it's so boring, but that's probably the color I feel the absolute most comfortable in. It's just one of those colors that no matter what combination I put it with or how I wear it, if it's in casual or dressy, I feel like I can relax and just be at ease and that's it funny. Probably, I guess I think of you in navy very often. Yeah, I have I have quite a bit of navy shirts and sweater, navy sweaters, especially mm-hmm. in the winter. And um, a lot of the coats and things that I buy tend to be navy, so I'm trying to force myself not to always do that. You know, yeah. but uh, it well, probably there's probably like some, yes, mm-hmm. there's probably some kind of study that you know your color that you always lean toward or makes mm-hmm. you comfortable probably says something about you. I'm sure, I'm sure we could find something somewhere that tells us that black and Navy may mean that you are super intelligent and perfectly wonderful and friendly and just 
the best person ever. That's exactly what it means. Huh? No doubt. <laughs> it doesn't mean boring or stayed or no, anything like that. No, it means that we like to, um, to accessorize with other colors, but yet the main color, the main part of us is steady and reassuring and blah, blah, whatever. You wear silver jewelry. Yeah. Silver and you wear more, jewelry. more gold. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I don't know why. I just like it. Yeah, it looks good on you. It's good with your coloring. Okay. Well, my ring is gold, gold and silver. Yeah, mine too. Oh, and silver's cheaper. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, this has been a fun discussion and a good discussion. It was really good. I, I told you earlier before when we were talking that I felt like I was preparing for a lesson in a way, but it, it really made me think hard about what are my favorite things about the Bible. And, and there are many, there's so many others that we could come up with too, but those are the ones that, that I felt the most strongly about. And Mm -hmm. it's interesting how we, we had different answers yet. We are very similar in how we feel about it, but that just goes to show that there's a lot of wonderful things about the Bible to love. Absolutely. And I thought for sure we'd have more crossover, like you said, than we did, but Mm -hmm. Um, that's just because, you know, when we did the episode on favorite things Mm -hmm. and we thought we should probably only stick to 10 each (laughs) and not go on and on and on. It's kind of that way, you know, because I came up with my list of three right away. And then for the rest of the week, I was like, oh, yeah, should I switch this one out and put this instead? Or what about this? Or what about this? Or (laughs) yeah, because God is so good and he's given us his good word. Yeah. Yeah. And we love it. And, and I'm so thankful for parents that instilled a love for the Bible into me, but I'm also thankful that God gave me enough time to grow, to learn it more on my own and to, mm-hmm. to learn my own faith. Mm-hmm. So we hope that those of you who are listening will also um, learn to love scripture, love the word of God and to know the heart of God because it's life-changing and it's there's nothing more important in the world than to know the heart of God and to know what he expects of us and to, to be grateful for the, the wonderful things that he's done for us and, and the future that we have with him. And we can learn all about that and know about that and have confidence in it because of the things we read in the word. So we are appreciative of all of you who have hung with us this long and, um, and we share want with you to, us what you yeah. love about the Bible. Yeah. We would love to, to hear that from you. And, um, we want to know, want you to get engaged with us on the different social media platforms we have a Facebook group called looking up with Kathy and Carla and by the same name on Instagram and just let us know what you think. And we, are, we thank you for listening and we thank you for staying with us and until next time, keep looking up. All right. I'll see you later. I'll see you next week.